Now I am going to discuss how to use a web based tool called draw.io um, to draw simple entity relationship diagrams. I launch my browser and simply type in draw.io and that brings up this screen. Of course you can download a desktop version and use it offline but uh, for uh, most practical purposes you can just do the uh, I mean you can just use the web based tool and I am creating a new diagram. Uh, if you choose any one of these options uh, for example here you have a bunch of predefined templates that you can use. I am going to simply pick a blank diagram and create. Um, when you draw the entity relationship diagram, um, it could be a binary relationship. Most of the real world relationships tend to be binary, about I would say 80% of the real world relationships tend to be binary. In a binary relationship, this simply means there are two entities uh, participating. So I'm just going to go here and there are different shapes that you can pick from. Uh, there are the tools are specialized into certain topics. Now we are picking entity relationship and I like working with this third item here. You can pick anyone that you want. It's simply a matter of what style you want to use. Um, so I'm going to have this. And you can either double click or drag and drop. I'm going to double click and I have three. I am just going to use two for a binary relationship. So here are the two entities rather that I will be using. And I can just highlight both of those. And when working with this, you should not worry about all the menu items uh, that are appearing. And these are the menu items for the browser. Instead, you should focus on the menu items right here, which are um, specific to our uh, the diagram that we are drawing. Now, I'm going to go to arrange and say align, and I say top align. That means you know both these. Uh, I shouldn't do this. You know, I'm going to go double. Say I selected each individual elements. The best way to do that is to highlight in this area. Uh, hold the command button uh, in the case of Mac and control in the case of Windows. See uh, how I am selecting both the, uh, the in entire entity. You do that and then you say align top align. They will be aligned. Don't select the individual elements like I did before. That will misalign the primary key which is denoted by PK. And uh, of course, you can change the name of the table. I can call this uh, uh, technician's table and call this uh, primary key column as tech number. And here I can say projects. And this would be project number. The same way I can go ahead and type in different names for the various columns that are in the entity. The next thing is to join it through a connector. In the entity relationship model itself, there are various connectors. Once you hover around, you can see here, this is one to one, one mandatory to one optional. Um, I, as I said, I'm not going to discuss what mandatory optional means. That's a subject matter in itself that deals with how to model uh, rela relational databases. I assume you know that now and uh, are just trying to pick the connector. Either you can pick the connector from here or you can just go ahead and, and draw a you know, straight line. Here you, ha you have different types of lines and I'm just for now I'm picking a straight line. And then when I hover around this, you see the light blue connection points that appear. You can pick any one connection point and drag a line. See when it turns green, I leave it there. So it is now exactly connected. The two entities are exactly connected. Now I can see, look at this right hand side panel here. And when I highlight the line, that changes. This is um, 
we would say this is a formatting panel and you can do different things there. Now my line is going to be one instead of one point I'm just going to make it two point and uh, the ends of the I told you either you can pick from this list your connector or now I'm simply drawing a line a straight line um, and then I can change the style do you see here uh, the connector is none here also I can make it none one is line start the other is line in this is line start and that's line in depending on where you are starting from uh, so now I go here and if you go way down the list I'm going to draw this following relationship uh, one technician manages uh, many project a project has only one technician so the projects are many the technician is the one entity and a technician is optional to a project meaning there can exist a technician who doesn't manage a project and there can be a project uh, without a technician assigned so I'm making both of them optional so one is uh, do you see the various connectors here one is optional one the other is optional many here optional many so now the connectors I want them to be a little bit bigger I can make this I can highlight again I should highlight the line and make this to be let's say 12 points and this to be 12 points thus that way these connectors are easily seen when I click here and in a one to many relationship the identifier of the one entity is usually posted into the many entity to establish the relationship so that becomes the foreign key also so other row one row two you can type in different column names now I have a one to many see how clean the diagram looks now and the next thing I can do is instead of leaving it as untitled diagram I can give it a name I am going to say this is um, PT uh, let's say project technician PRT and I say rename so here you see PRT rename appears and here is always a warning unsaved changes are here unsaved changes are there in this diagram click to save I am clicking to save okay so that is how you create a one to many in the case of one to one many to many mandatory you just have to pick the right the connection arrow um, again I will show you in this list uh, way down at the bottom there are various connection arrow there is one more thing I would like to point out is you know you can in a real world situation these diagrams connect many entities and that's called an enterprise data model and you may close these individual columns here like I did I click here close the individual columns and only the table name appears that way you can um, print the diagram in one page um, another so I'm going to go back to the two pages now if you click out of the diagram you see where the grid is you can make the grid big small turn it off turn it back on here the grids are bigger as you can see uh, the page view is if you uncheck it and you know right now it is a page view and you can say view fit window um, view zoom out zoom out view one more zoom out I will show you so here I have one page my diagram is on the page view you see now if I 
turn it off, I have an unlimited space. I can make the diagram as big as I want. That's what the page view means. Again, you can go and go to background and tie, make different colors of the background here. Apply, you know, and of course I'm going to turn it off. Um, so you can do different things, you know, you can explore this. The next thing I'm going to do is to illustrate the recursive relationship. I'm turning all these off. Now we change the uh, entity name to employees and uh, denoted the primary key to be employee number. And I have a manager ID here, which is going to be the foreign key. I will type in the foreign key label. Uh, I can. Uh, and I now want to illustrate to you how to draw a recursive relationship where the line goes, starts from here and goes back to itself. Um, so let's try doing it. Uh, in here, I pick the second item here, which is the orthogonal. Um, again, I highlight, see, you see how the connection points are light blue. I click the connection point, stay put. Then I can just use this. The default arrows are coming up. Of course, I can change that in the formatting anytime. So the next thing is, see how the waypoints are coming up. I can change the waypoint, grab the waypoint and uh, draw the arrows. So I go here. I can go here, I can come here, I can now drag this, drag this and when it becomes see green, I can leave it so it's exactly touching it, the same way I can drag it here and I can make it smaller, this recursive line. Sometimes you may find uh, drawing this a little bit difficult um, from this end to this end. It doesn't matter if it starts from the side, if that's easier. You can just start from the side and go back to it. Again, as we did before, you can select the line. And um, after you select the line, you can make sure if you want a different kind of a connect arrow here at the end, uh, way down this list you can pick the appropriate one. This is now an optional one to option an employee need not have a manager, a manager need not manage any employees is what we have de depicted here in this diagram and you can change that. Okay, So this is how you draw a recursive relationship. There are unsaved changes and if you want you can save those. Um, Now I'm going to delete all this and show you how to do it. Yeah? Um, super class, subclass diagram. I'm making copies of this. I, if you drag it out or do something weird, you can always type in control Z or command C to undo your unintended um, changes to the diagram. Okay. Now this is uh, also fairly simple. I'm not going to take the time to retype the table, the entity names. You can change that to maybe parts here and maybe this would be manufactured parts uh, and this would be um, purchase parts. So you can have different entities like this and you can simply again go here. See when you see the connection points if you click then you can just draw off. Command Z. Click, then you go. Click. See when it turns plus, you can just 
and draw this diagram here of course I'm going to change it to this for now I'm going to turn off um, the arrow heads make it none go up to here See if you now my goal is to draw another arrow here. I grab the middle and go up, so that gives me a handle here that I can bring it down. I can make this. You can use the arrow key to make slightly move the entities up and again I am going to make another line, a plain line from again I hover around use this to draw a plain line and now I highlight this part and uh, you know how the superclass subclass diagram looks like. I am going to make it like this so that's not the end I want so I make it none and go back here and pick the same thing so that would be my super class subclass diagram of course I can click anywhere and uh, type in um, mandatory optional you know that notation if you don't know uh, you can look up under superclass subclass di diagrams, uh, Google and uh, see different notations that are available. Um, so I am going to make it like um, highlight this thing, highlight this, go to text and make it bigger if you want and move the text to different areas. I am using the arrow keys on the keyboard just to move them slightly at a time. So this is how you draw the superclass subclass diagram. I save the changes and finally to save the diagram I can simply say file save as um, and you can save it to different places. I am going to save it to my device. So it's in here it's saved in my drive in the download folder uh, or you can see file export as png this will come in handy and um, you can export pt.png and download uh, and say download so it's downloaded and if you go to I'm just going to make download folder just to illustrate to you so that's how my diagram looks like and you can um, take it to word and there are different export formats also that uh, I'm not discussing in detail you can go to uh, VSDX uh, VSDX is a VCO file uh, of course, I'm using a Mac and there is no VCO option here. So, but you can save it as a VSDX file and um, I don't have VCO here, but if you have VCO, you can bring it to VCO and edit it. But most of, more often than not, you would just save it as a PNG and use it wherever you need to. Um, and that's how you use your um, draw.io to draw different diagrams. Thank you.